So tell us then about this natural remedy that you are working on and how might it apply to somebody who's listening to this video and thinking, should they try this? I literally yesterday, I knew we were talking today and just yesterday somebody messaged me saying, I'm having all these XYZ gastric digestive complaints, help, how do I proceed? And I said, hold yeah. on, I'm doing this interview tomorrow. I'm going to publish the video and then tell me what you think. So yeah. Yeah. for her and for so many people that I work with and your audience, what do you want to tell them to think about is would this uh, natural remedy that you're working on, how might they consider using it? Yeah, sure. So um, again, I'll take a step back, right? Just first principles quickly. If you have a digestive problem, right? And you want to figure out what to do to fix it. I think first is you want to ask the right question. So what we've noticed is I think there are four sort of axes on which you have some type of issue. Um, the first one is obviously diet. Maybe you're eating something, like you said, you're, that's creating an immune response. You're either allergic to it or it's not suiting you. So before you jump to including a supplement or trying something else, see, look, start from there. Are you having too much milk? Are you eating 10 rotis in a day, right? Maybe these are amounts that um, your body isn't being able to handle. Maybe you're not being able to burn it off or work it off. If you're eating much more than you need, all the wrong things, start there. I think step two is you look at lifestyle. Are you eating at odd hours in the night? Are you skipping meals? Are you eating lunch at 1 a.m. to uh, 1 p.m. today and then 2 30 p.m. tomorrow, right? These aren't things that your body appreciates. You're getting in the way of your own digestive health. So again, before you think of supplements or thinking about what else to do, try to fix these two. And there's nothing novel on you that you don't already know. If you've done something and it doesn't feel natural, I right? think about it. Does eating dinner at 12 at night feel natural? No, it really doesn't. And so, you know, they just start to cut that, you know, cut that back and see how your system feels. I think this is where I would really start from. But there are two other aspects which I think um, uh, contribute a lot more. Right? And if you if you address the first two and your symptoms still remain, I think then you want to start thinking about, okay, what's the first thing we've noticed, which is very, very common in India, is that it's usually a side effect of some other medicine you're taking. So a lot of people in India take iron supplementation. If you go on Amazon and look at reviews, the number one issue is suit nahi hota. Pet mein dard ho rahe, right? The problem isn't your system. The problem is that what you've taken to help some other condition has a side effect and is causing some sort of GI upset. Now, the recommendation isn't stop that. The recommendation is recognize that because some herbal churan, tablet, supplement, whatever it is, won't fix that problem because the root cause is something else altogether. So work with a practitioner like yourself to figure out what alternative you can figure out, right? What is the uh, other recommendation for that particular case? So this is part, part one. The fourth one is, is the area that we specialize in. And I see this happening at wide scale across uh, the country now, which is it's probably an infection. So if you look at the gut microbiome report, like you do stool DNA sequencing of Indians at scale, 100, 200, 300 reports, you will see a parasite or a worm in at least 30 or 35% of cases. Right. So this is something that we don't want there to be in your large intestine. It's a negative pathogen. And so this actively interferes with your body's ability to do what it should. It's, it's almost like Someone's put a wrench in a gear, right? Something is stuck. Something's not moving as freely as it should. It's not your fault. It's not your food. It's not your lifestyle. There is an infection that needs to be addressed. And so you have infections at three different stages, right? The infection in the stomach, which is called, which is usually H. pylori. It's again, very, very common in the country. If you have that infection, you'll start feeling heaviness in your stomach. You'll have low stomach acid, right? Which will affect your protein. You will suddenly have probably stomach pain, if it's severe, you know, you have inflammation, swelling, redness. There's multiple ways you can test this. But if you have any combination of these symptoms, heartburn, and you've already addressed the diet and lifestyle, please check for the infection. The second piece, or the second most common, and now coming down, right, so in the small intestine, is what you said is SIBO. Very, very common in the country again. What you'll notice is that there is bacterial overgrowth. Bacteria are in numbers much larger than they should have been in the wrong place. And so the usual symptom of this type of infection is that you have excessive bloating. You eat food or you don't eat food, right? In the morning, even after you wake up, you just have a weirdly inflated belly. 
एंड वेन दिस हैपन्स दूशल रिस्पॉन्स पीपल गिव इज मेरा पूरा बॉडी का शेप खराब हो गया है हाथ पतले है गर्दन पतला है लेकिन एकदम पेट बहुत बाहर होता है If you've done everything for bloating and it's severe, it's probably a severe infection. Now you come to the large intestine, and then there's a lot that can happen. You can have bad bacteria. You can have a lot of fungus. You can have fungal overgrowth. You can have, like I said, parasites and worms. So if you don't address the infections, it's really hard for your body's digestive system to come back to normal. What we do as a company in Atag is that we create products to address these infections naturally, without so, antibiotics. without antibiotics or anti fungals or deworming tablets right could you do it in a non allopathic manner like in a non chemical manner and you don't need to because a lot of them have side effects i wouldn't need to tell your audience that antibiotics will have a huge effect on the gut microbiome it's not taken at once and we're fine some of those last especially if you don't know how to rebuild your microbiome after taking the antibiotic so our thought process was okay can we create the alternative i like, can we do something that can give you the result without the side effects and that's what that's that's the aim right so i have the product here actually this is the one that i've shared and this is our, our most recent launch right this is what we call now tum guard it's for uh, essentially guarding your tummy right so the idea is we want to create something to address infections in your stomach and this is for h pylori so anybody that's on an acidity tablet regularly twice a week or more this is the product that we recommend you know they would opt for in the same way if we're talking about a little bit lower down if we're talking about sibo like we referred to right huge gas complaints and bloating then the other one that we usually have is calming bitters this is a juice this is something that you would have uh, in an on an empty stomach in the morning and you would continue this for a period of 20 to 24 days the aim is if i can just get rid of the infection then everything else that you're putting so much effort into you know the right diet the right exercise will just start to yield better results because we've gotten rid of the bad and now the rest can do its work on its own right so that's sort of the way we think about things and the way we sort of target um uh, helping and assisting in gut health matters got it and you've built this through anecdotal uh, experience over the years and yet i know that from a scientific perspective you want to build the credibility behind the product and you're looking to even research this out and you know not have it be sort of written off as some you know just a, a sort of casual remedy but you want to be able to build confidence in this as a solution for people and so what are you doing towards that yeah you know absolutely i think uh, on point and and i remember our conversation about this as well right that you don't want if the product works and if the n has been large enough if you've done your pilots why not publish the data right let it be out there for the world to see I think uh, for the past six months we've been investing a lot of time into this. Studying GI infections is very tough. It's extremely expensive, and that's why even today the kind of GI papers you get out are largely symptom based. Very few will have you know references to bacteria and you know on a on a clinical scale uh, and on 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 humans in particular. We spend a lot of time doing this. So as we speak right now, there are four separate clinical trials underway. Nice. where we're trying to keep n very large so we're doing this with minimum 50 people across trials to get a sense of which targeted pathogen we're removing said differently if you wake up one day and say hey i want to improve gut health there there should now be data to say that says that, okay if you've taken hug skull make bitters for 24 days this is where you will see improvement and this is where you may not and so we want to get our products and our stat to that point such that a customer doesn't have to think twice about ye kya karega mere liye right this is very clear and it's out there right exactly and you know if any scientific theory whether it is einstein's theory of relativity or you know a drug an allopathic drug that needs to pass uh, scrutiny we want to be able to show that these experimental results in one area have been reproduced again another, by yeah. yeah by another yeah. user uh that's when you can finally find the science and we start with anecdotes we start with theories and ideas and then if there is truth there it will start to emerge as you keep testing larger and larger numbers yeah yeah absolutely right in fact that's that's the trouble with a lot of supplements today right getting a single clinical trial done is very easy take 15 patients show them some result for a couple of months it's fine uh, but someone like you would never believe that and you would think yeah, you probably would never even recommend that because you know it's not repeated and it not to say It might yeah, be placebo right. effect. Uh, not and not to say that the person sponsoring the study is the person yeah. who stands to gain the most by selling the product. Sure, there's conflict of interest. Yeah, 
Yeah, and so you need to do, I think exactly what you said, needs to be multi-center, tested across different populations, needs to have robust data that has no, uh, that's completely independent of the company that's actually making the product. And so, you know, we've tried to put all of these safeguards in place as we run our trial. We set it up and then we leave it and we see what comes out of it, right? And so that's sort of the way we're approaching things. Well, I think that's a really sort of responsible way to sort of try this out. And so I wish you good luck. I, I would love to see if you've come up with something that can help uh, people with this daily but life irritating symptom, right? It's not putting you sick enough to rush to a doctor or a hospital, but it's creating yeah. quality of life issues where your quality of life is just not okay because of your yeah. digestion.